everybody. Um, it was a, it has been a transformational, historic, consequential session. Uh, we came to work on day one, ready to work on day one. We heard from, you know, we brought Minnesotans to the table. We had uh, good discussions in committee. And, you know, we did take, uh, they might have been Democratic bills, but we did take Republican amendments and we worked with them to pass legislation. Uh, when we were out campaigning last, uh, prior to the election, you know, we heard Minnesotans were tired of gridlock. They wanted us to come here and get the job done. Uh, they wanted, you know, they were concerned about affordable housing across the state. There were child care issues across the state. People wanted safe communities and strong schools. Um, and we worked hard to build an economy that works for every Minnesotan across the state. And I think with our total budget, budget package, um, with historic tax cuts and, and historic investments, uh, I think we, we did that. We delivered for Minnesotans. Have you guys said everything done that you wanted to get done this year? You know, it was a long list. I think we got a lot done, but you know, we'll kind of reassess and uh, see what was left and you know, get ready, go out and meet with constituents and Minnesotans throughout the summer and next fall and come back ready to work again next year. The House Speaker left the possibility open for a special session on Fairview Sanford. Is there anything else you could potentially take up in a special session? I'm just trying to figure out, you know, we made it through today. There was a lot of times today that we didn't know if the revisers um, and the staff would get these bills done on time, and they did. They were miracle workers. Uh, we put the large bonding package, the largest bonding capital investment package ever together in the last few days. They miraculously put these large bills together, spreadsheets together, um, and we got the job done. And so that capital investment bill will help communities and families, and um, it'll just preserve our Minnesota tradition and Minnesota institutions for years to come. Senator, you used the adjective transformational for your just encapsulation of the session. What's behind that? I think we had a lot of bills that will truly help families. We, the tax bill will, you know, according to the governor, cut child poverty. We passed paid family leave, which a lot of people have been asking for because you have a lot of big businesses here in Minnesota that offer that and a lot of smaller businesses that have done, you know, wish they could offer it. Uh, as someone who is lucky enough to have a job, who is out on a medical issue, I could do my job from home. But a lot of people can't, and I think paying family leave will give them um, their ability to stay at home and heal and still provide security for their family. Uh, legalized cannabis, uh, the public safety bill, uh, I think with uh, gun reform measures in there, I think well, people have been working hard on a lot of years, so we hope that makes their community safer. So I think there was just a lot of really big bills that will impact families in a positive way. Senator, the Republicans were saying that the transformational was historic in the sense of transferring income from one group to another via Minnesota's tax code. And what do you respond to? How do you respond to that? You know, we heard that uh, Minnesotans were struggling. They couldn't find child care. They couldn't find affordable housing. And we did pass bills this year that will help that. If you look at the totality of all the budget, there's a lot of pieces in the different budgets that will help families and will lower costs for families. Um, when we came out of the pandemic, you had a lot of people that were doing really well. I always talk about the K-shaped economic recovery. So a lot of people did really well, and a lot of people were still struggling. And we wanted to make sure to help all of Minnesotans that we lifted up all of Minnesotans. Uh, I work for Senator Paul Wellstone, and he said we all do better when we all do better. And I truly believe that by lifting up everybody, uh, it will help the entire Minnesota economy and our Minnesota state. How much cleanup work do you expect to have to do in the 2024 session on things, uh, the paid leave or the marijuana bill as as they actually get implemented? You know, I don't know if they'll call they, it will be cleanup, but we, you know, we did have a lot of conversations with a lot of different stakeholders, people that liked the bill, people that have concerns about the bill, and we continued to revise those bills. Uh, I think we were kind of planning to, as we continue to implement them and look move forward to continue those conversations, and so I think that was always the plan. You have a diverse caucus with a range of priorities. Can you talk a bit about how you held together 34 votes throughout this we session? We are the most diverse Senate ever. We are the most diverse caucus ever. We had, uh, we never had a black woman in the chamber before. We have now three. We have the first time we had a black Mr. President, um, who you know was a choir director. And so, if you ever watch the Senate, he truly runs it like it's a choir, and he is the choir director. Uh, it was great watching him do that. And so, you know we. We brought a lot of different voices to the table and that I think that was really good. Um, a lot of those voices had never been at the table before and I think bringing them to the table helped elevate that discussion. We represent you know, small communities in rural Minnesota, the suburbs, to you know, the large urban core. And so we 
as we got to know each other and had those conversations, we learned that we had a lot more similarities than we did differences. And we just kept talking about that and talking what our priorities were. And we actually listened to each other. We listened to our constituents, we listened to each other and just worked hard to make sure that what we brought to the floor helped all Minnesotans. Senators, uh, along the line of what my colleague was asking, a lot of the analysts, I think, were stunned by how you held caucus discipline through some tough issues, the abortion issue, the gun issue, paid family medical leave most recently. Were you ever worried about that, that you might not be able to get those 34 votes that you, you know, needed? We, again, it was all about having that conversations and listening to each other, and that's what we did all session long, is we had those conversations, um, some very personal, heated, thoughtful conversations to understand, so we each could understand what the needs of the different communities across the state were, and you know, that's how we did it, and that's what we're going to keep doing. We just want to help Minnesotans all across the state. All right, I got to get upstairs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being out here tonight. You know, it was an interesting session. Uh, I think one of the more partisan sessions that you've seen uh, here at the state capitol, which was extremely disappointing. One of the hopes that I had when we started out this session was that we're nearly 50% of the body, Senate Republicans are. So I figured that we would have some really good bipartisan work going forward. That didn't happen. And I think that's room that we can be improving on going forward. It's something that we're really gonna focus on in the next session coming up. You saw in the bonding discussions, what happened there? You know, we were able to get these big bills that had really good support on both sides of it. It really will show the model for going forward. But for right now, uh, it was pretty disappointing on the $9 billion of tax increases, the reduction of public safety. You know, our schools are gonna be uh, really fettered with the new mandates and regulations tied to them as well. So we're hoping that in the next session, maybe we can do some work on, on figuring out what the needs of Minnesotans are. What do you think made the difference on that bonding bill and specifically getting the nursing home uh, provision uh, in there? Right, so a couple of things there. You know, the time of year, usually the, the end dates really add a lot of pressure to getting deals done. The other thing is, uh, Senator Dietzik and I really had a good rapport, uh, especially towards the end when she was back more full time. That really helped it to kind of thaw out the negotiation uh, with the House side. So, worked together pretty closely on finally figuring out a solution to move forward. So, that was very helpful as well. Do you have any policy goals for the 2024 session? We just walked out of the 23 session here and you're asking about that. So, uh, no, I think one of the issues that, that will probably be coming up again is we'll assess, you know, bonding needs. That's usually a bonding year. Uh, I know they reserve some cash on the bottom line for, for those projects as well. But then, you know, we'll be looking at some policy issues as well that, that were left on general orders uh, this last year. On that note, back to bonding, there was a conversation on Thursday that there was basically not going to be a deal on bonding. What changed? between then and Saturday when you guys finally got that deal done? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. So it really got down, you know, we weren't really exchanging. We kept giving offers, but nothing was coming back that made really moved the needle at all. And then finally, I think a lot of the conversations I had with Senator Dietzik, uh, she put some pressure on the House side that they came to the table at that point and really said, okay, let's figure out a way that we can solve the nurse, nursing home issue, because that was one of our big asks. We dropped a lot of our tax and surplus demands and said, can we at least fix nursing homes? And that seemed to kind of break the log jam too. Did you, did you choose nursing homes because you thought that you could, get, I'm not saying that you weren't passionate about taxes, but, but that you felt you might be able to get some consensus there and that's why you, you zeroed in on that or was that on your agenda kind of all along? That, that's always been on our agenda, but it got to the point where do we take care of the vulnerable in Minnesota? Or do we continue to demand something that we know that Democrats weren't interested in? So in order to make that, that bill work, uh, we knew that we had to do the right thing and choose seniors. And, and it was that was a less defensible position for them to be reluctant in terms of the, the funding for nursing homes? I think you hit it square. All along this session, Republicans have been suggesting that budget and tax policies are going to crash when it's going to that doesn't happen. So I kind of trail off there, I'm sorry. What if that doesn't happen, that, that, that this economy doesn't take a, a nosedive as sure. you guys can see forecasting? That's, that's always a possibility, and, and it'd be great if the, if the economy continued forward. You look at the burden this is going to be putting on Minnesota families and businesses, and you wonder, you know, is this going to be sustainable in the long term? And that's something we're going to watch going forward. Of course, we're always rooting for Minnesota, Minnesota families and communities to grow and thrive. 
uh, but we just think that this really fetters our communities uh, in a way that is it going to be sustainable? We're going to have to stay tuned and see. Beyond uh, the nursing home piece, what are some of the other major concessions that you were able to gain out of this session? So this, really the bonding bill was the one where, where we really were able to work bipartisan. You know, before that, you know, of course the egg bill is something that typically we can agree on and you saw a bipartisan vote on that. When HS uh, headed out of here, that was something that had strong bipartisan support. Unfortunately, it really got watered down going into the conference committee or coming out of the conference committee. But really bonding was the one where, if you looked up at the board today, because we had buy-in from Republicans and Democrats on a deal that we worked on together, it just moved the ball forward. So that's where I gave a speech in there, just how do we build that relationship for next session where we can do that going back and forth for a bipartisan, more unified approach to solving Minnesota's issues. We asked uh, the Senate Majority Leader about how she held them together. How did you try to peel votes apart? <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> well, she was much more successful than I am. I guess uh, she did a great job of holding her votes together on some very, very uh, controversial is issues, which uh, really surprised our team. We thought we'd probably get a little bit more bipartisan action between the two, but I really have to give a lot of credit to the team that we have, uh, the Senate Republicans. A very, very strong, very uh, held together uh, very well throughout the session uh, on a number of these issues that, you know, typically we might have some issues with. And so I'm so proud of, of the folks that we have, the new members and the seniors that we have uh, with us as well. So it's been a fun year to develop as a caucus. Uh, just look forward to what, what we have next year. So it sounds like you're, you were surprised that you couldn't have more leverage with the one seat majority, that you thought you might find more success getting Democrats to join your side than you actually did. Yeah, I, I kind of expected that because, you know, we're at the 33-34. I thought there'd be a little bit more bipartisan interaction. You know, when we were running the Senate for six years, there was a lot of that. You know, bipartisan, tripartisan interactions on bills. And that means that you have a buy-in from the other side, the opposition. You've worked together to do that. This year they had to hold together because there wasn't that bipartisanship on those bills. Very partisan bills, and so they had to hold together. Your, colleague, your House colleagues over there are anxious to get out there next year and, and test these results to, with voters, your House Republican colleagues. You have to wait three more years, which seems like a lifetime in politics. Is, is that going to be a problem, keeping voters focused on what was done in, in a way that you think was done wrong? Yeah, that, that's a great question. It's a challenge that we have as well. And so we're really going to we're really going to be looking at you know what happens in the house side, uh, but we've you know we're already in districts in talking to voters, trying to understand what how they perceive the effects of this session as well. But then once the results come in and the bills start becoming effective, you know, making sure that we're talking to Minnesotans. How is this affecting you? Does this help you? Does this not? Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna really be developing our message then over the next three years based on that. Senator, I just uh, stepped up real quickly. Is this sustainable, the whatever percent increase in the state budget, the number of new state employees, how concerned are you about all that? Tom, that's one of our top concerns. 40% growth in state government, you know, our budget grew from $52 billion to $72 billion. We raised, raised taxes, something like $9 billion this session, uh, Senate Democrats and, and House Democrats. Uh, so long term, this is going to be an issue. This is going to be an issue in our economy. This is going to be an issue getting businesses to come here, families to come here that want to grow this economy in this state. We're extremely concerned about that. Democrats say the majority is that they secure uh, even a mandate for some of these things on abortion. I think, I think Horton enlisted abortion, climate, democracy, schools. Um, you say, so um, a mandate, when you think of a mandate, you think of a strong majority, right? So what we got in the state was, in one district, uh, there was 161 votes. If they would have, sorry, if they would have flipped, uh, we would have been in control. You know, if one district, if the candidate uh, had a little bit different messaging, we probably would have been controlling. So to say that there was a mandate is pretty strong. I think what, what Minnesotans wanted to see is a government that works together. And we didn't have that unity this year. That's what Minnesotans mandated. The issues, I think, are, are still on the table. It's public safety, it's education, it's tax relief, and it, Democrats did not deliver on any of those promises or expectations. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much.